I am the Commissar. That's my name. Forged Alliance Forever. That's the game. And who have we got with a claim to fame? Today, we have Jadoka1972 Noob here in the south in pink. He's 1800 rated and cybern. And against him, we have Zayla Folleri, who is 1600 rated and UEF in baby blue up here in the north. Yes, it's a 1v1 and the map is Asteria, which is this nice little hexagon. If we have a look at it, we see there's a lot of reclaims scattered around these middle islands and at the bottom of each hill. This looks like it was originally a six player map as there's one hill with a starting location for each player. And I imagine that there's going to be a lot of competition over these expansions. I guess it's like a sort of land version of Roanoke Abyss for those of you who have seen that map. So, starting build orders. We've got a pretty standard first hydro build for Zayla. And he's got a bunch of pigeons and an air factory queued up. Same deal for Judoka. Let's see if he's going for air second or third. I don't know whether we're going to see much in the way of naval play today because sure there's a great big sea around the outside and especially in the case of Zayla who has access to missile cruisers it could be worth bombarding up onto these starting hilltops. Ah, Jijoka going second land and then third air, so we'll see if that makes a difference. And Jidoka also being more aggressive at the start, he's got this Mantis and Lab out right off the bat, heading out to this expansion here, whereas no combat units at all for Zayla yet. Zayla is just being greedy and expanding as fast as he can with engineers. Good reclaim grabbing there. I'm sure Jidoka's doing the same. And more combat units coming out here for Jidoka. At the moment they're just looking set to be defensive, but if he knew what Zayla was doing, he could send them up here or here and stop the engineers, because the engineers have nothing to defend them. And Inti's coming out for Zayla. We can see down there at the bottom that he has a transport planned, and presumably he's going to be dropping some of these Plateaus. <clears throat> I still got that cough. Don't worry, I can't infect you over the internet. Probably. Jidoka's air factory is up and he has a scout out and about going to see what's going on. He also sends an inti over Zayla's base, but Zayla already has a big heap of inties and shoots him down. And Zayla beginning to get a bit more land production up at last, scattered around the map so he can defend more quickly, or possibly, yes, he's going for military units over here, rather than any more greedy expansion. Awful lot of land factories also going up for Jidoka. He's obviously got the same sort of mindset because with these open spaces, land spam is going to be very important for map control. As you can see, all these mexes are just dotted about the place. No real clusters apart from the six starting locations. And having scouted to see that there's nothing y there yet, Jidoka has sent his Mantis and Lab out to be a little bit aggressive. 
and it looks like they might catch some engineers although I see a tank on its way over here meanwhile there's that transport out for Zayla he's looking like he's going to be dropping this plateau over here and he's already bringing tanks in from this forward factory to defend it which is just as well because Jidoka is trying the same on his other side and sending his mantis and scout up and across in comes the transport but it's going to drop in front of these tanks so there's a chance that this mantis might catch one of the engineers Over here, we have the Mantis and a Striker seeing each other. Who's going to... And the Mantis... Oh, they, they draw on this side. Oh, a couple of richer tanks coming in and raiding. And this one picks up an Engineer. So, nice pickup from that Mantis. Over here, the NGs have been dropped. And the, now we have a couple of Mantis running in. But there's enough tanks already on standby that Zayla doesn't lose any of his NGs and can expand safely to that plateau. This Mantis is damaged and will probably die to this tank. It's taken out an NG, it's taken out a mech. Zayla will have to re-expand there, so good work from Jidoka. And Jadoka has brought his com out to this expansion to build it in person, whereas Zayla is still only just moving out of his base, and he looks like he's heading forward rather than trying to set up a com base in either expansion. Look at this trickle of tanks from Jadoka just swarming across the map, though. They're going everywhere, and I guess he's hoping that Zayla can't be everywhere at once. He's got quite a mass here, and Zayla is just trickle trickling in, so I think that we're going to see a win for Jidoka on this side. Zayla looking to repay the favour though with a mass here, but Jidoka's already grouping a reasonably large army as well. Who's going to win this one? It's going to come down to positioning. I like Zayla's positioning better. And he gets a couple of kills as he comes sideways into the line of Jidoka's tanks, which is pretty nice. But no rest for the wicked. Jidoka is pushing forward here and here. And this one, I think, is going to get stopped through the middle. But this one might get some work done. And there's a lot of NGs here. And... At the same time, Jidoka has dropped NGs to reclaim all that tasty reclaim here. But speaking of drops, we have a more aggressive dro drop here from Zayla. He loses the transport and gets his units down. I don't think they're going to achieve much. They'll get an engineer kill, maybe? Yeah, maybe even... Actually, that's pretty good. But Jidoka has been forced to recall all these units to defend, and that is going to be worth it for Zayla. Meanwhile, the fights across the middle continue. Jidoka has been able to keep Zayla off this plateau while he's developing both of his own, and that has given him an eco lead of around 14, make that 10, at this stage. Not a huge lead, but you know, enough to make a difference. Now, Jidoka has this T2 land HQ here, but I only see the, and he's had it for quite a while, but I only see these NGs having popped out and then not building this PJ. There we go. No T2 combat units on the field at all. Has Zayla actually got any tech yet? Yes, he has. And he's producing engineers as well. Zayla finally making an effort to take this plateau, but at the moment he's only got tanks in there and his NGs aren't in position to just come in and take it as yet. Meanwhile his com is heading for the middle, which would be nice if he could set up some factories here and start eating all this reclaim. 
before Jidoka's drops Ito. But at the moment, it looks like he's more interested in just heading forward and clearing out these tanks. Jidoka making another push up to stop Zayla getting his right hand plateau at all costs. I don't think that's enough, and it's trickling in, so Zayla should win that engagement there. And we have another drop out for the cliff reclaim around these lakes. Jidoka lands a batch of NGs. Zayla's comm is driving back the force through the middle, and we see Jidoka starting Tech 2 air there. Yeah, look at this, Jidoka. I was not expecting that. Jidoka is actually looking set to push Zayla off this plateau. If he can capitalize on that, that would be brutal, because at the moment we're two plateaus to three in favor of Jidoka. Though that may change if this army has anything to say about it. There's a reasonable army here with a point defense waiting. But there's slightly less in the middle here. And if Zayla can just come around the back, he could inflict a decent amount of damage. That is a lot of assist on the air factory. And Joker is using it to go for Corsairs. He's got quite a lot queued up. Could he be planning to just snipe Zayla? Because Zayla was just standing there right in the middle of the map. He's naked, and he's vulnerable, and more drops from Jidoka to get all this reclaim. Jidoka's total mass is only a thousand ahead though, so Zayla hasn't been sloppy himself. And Jidoka is hiding like a coward under the water here in the corner. Guessing that he's thinking that Zayla just won't look there. And we're beginning to see rhinos coming out from Jidoka. Have we got much T2 on the field for Zayla yet? Well, we've got a few pillars coming down the middle. I'm surprised Zayla hasn't gone for a gun upgrade. If I were him, I'd be getting gun nano if I wanted to be standing out in the middle, leading from the front. Jidoka hasn't got an upgrade because he's decided that his com has done his com's work and has gone to the water. Zayla has changed his Corsair boat for gunships and he's defending against this raid with gunships and that's probably going to be wise. He's lost a couple of mexes down here already and he might lose a third but those gunships and Corsairs should be enough to clear it up and he's got more coming in all the time and he sh shifted to mostly gunship production. There are a couple of pillars in there, but there's no flak, and Zayla has got an air force, but I think that Jidoka has more of an air force. Zayla needs this flak here to come in and do some work. On this side, Zayla has brought his T2 tanks, he's pushed in, and he is taking back his right hand hill. But let's see if he will actually be able to capitalize on it this time as Jidoka has rhinos to face him, and I can't really say easily who's got the more there. I like that little template, I don't know if I'd use it myself, it seems like it's a bit of a waste of space, but I can see the point, it's like causing parting seals for the enemy as well as protecting the PD, but it's quite wasteful of space. Zayla has seen what Jidoka did with gunships and he's doing it himself, so Zayla also at T2 Air and bringing in a horde of gunships and just like Jidoka didn't have to worry about flak from Zayla, Zayla doesn't have to worry about flak from Jidoka and these gunships are going to carve it up but don't forget that gunships can fire at other gunships, they can't fire at fighters but they can fire at other gunships and Jidoka brings his gunships in but Zayla has more fighters on point, takes out the gunships and this could be a major change in favour of Zayla because he is now raiding Jidoka's actual expansion with its production and if he can take out outcomes of that he'll have to focus that down he needs to focus this factory down before it can produce much more flak and then he can worry about dealing with all these mexes We'll check back on them in a moment though, we can't remain idle because over here we have a significant push coming in for, from Zayla and again he's going round here and trying to get in the back rather than heading straight forward, forcing Jidoka 
to bring his units round and reposition. I think Jadoka has got a little more here and will probably defend, though not if this has anything to say about it. Meanwhile, those gunships have done an immense amount of eco damage here. Six, seven, eight mechs are down for Jadoka already. And Zayla is now in the lead by about 14 or 15, where once Jadoka was in the lead by the same amount. This Rhino is going to cause a headache for Zayla, though. It's just on its own, messing around, killing some stuff, and it's just one Rhino, but Zayla will have to worry about it. A gunship would deal with it, but that would mean him noticing it and ha sending a gunship. Meanwhile, however, Zayla's forces have swarmed Jadoka's tanks. So these gunships, I was expecting these gunships to stay and help the land army, but no, they've gone straight on and they're just planning to eat up this expansion. And that would be quite the turn of events, but I think we have to go to split screen because look up at the top right. Up here on the right, we have Jadoka smashing through this expansion of Zayla's again. But this time, Zayla has returned the favour and these gunships are mashing up this one and he's got this force pushing through here. Jidoka was trying to respond but he just hasn't got the units in position and he'll lose this entire expansion. Up here, he's charging in. Is he going to be able to get into the main base with it? I don't know but we're going to find out. And over here, these gunships are cleaning up what little is left of that hill from Jidoka. So I'm expecting a significant eco lead for Zayla to develop soon as he's able to capitalise on still having all of the base he had previously and Jadoka's lost in this space. Zayla never really had this one so he doesn't have to worry as much about losing it as Jadoka has to worry about losing that. Zayla's tanks are beginning to run out of steam here but the gunships are coming into support and I think they'll make the difference. Over here, Jadoka has decided that this is a little too much to face and he's pushing back through here. That would be nice if he can take out this factory. He's still not got enough flak in there though and Zayla's gunships can go to town on it. Zayla has also chosen to hide his comb but he's hiding in the middle lake there we can see. And Jadoka is beginning to pull back. Now, if we zoom out to have a quick overview, we can see that Zayla pretty obviously has air control, but I'm seeing flak rolling out for Jidoka down there, here and here. And so, if he continues on that, he might be able to defend, but he's, he's got to worry about getting that flak into position, and at the moment there's very little of it up here. More coming out here, unsurprisingly, and you can see that he's got quite a bit of it queued up among his tanks. But it's going to take time to come out, and this is a big horde of gunships from Zayla, but they're idle at the moment. Zayla needs to get out and shoot stuff with them, like, come up here, shoot this, destroy this factory. And Jidoka has managed to colonise this hill, which is pretty nice, the hill that one might argue by rights, as it were, in as much as you can have such a thing in FAF, it should have been Zayla's. But nope, Jadoka's got it. However, he's only got a little bit of T1 NGs there, and I think the stat is it takes 18 seconds for a T1 mech to pay for itself, so these will pay for themselves. But already Zayla has a pillar in there, and I don't think they'll last very long. There's nothing really to defend, so this is opportunistic rather than actual expansion and down here Zayla is still keeping Jidoka off this hill but he's pushing back with quite a lot and I see a loyalist in there so we're now at T3 for Jidoka and not even started T3 for Zayla so I'll have to quickly think about that if he wants to remedy the situation no flak in here good catch for the gunships that's going to be a lot of mass smacked down by Zayla's air control. And this is a big engagement but it looks like Jidoka's got enough and 
Actually, you've got more than enough because that's now three loyalists in there. Zayla is really going to have to worry about that T3 land. And Jidoka's managed to catch up on the eco. We now have two hills of no man's land rather than... So it's reasonably balanced in terms of map control. But these gunships, they need to be doing more here. Kill this. Kill this so he can't make flak here. Knock him off this hill. That'd be amazing. And we do have a push from Zayla coming down this side, and that might be enough to knock Jadoka off this hill. But Yin and Yang, as Zayla pushes down this side, Jadoka pushes up that side. And which way could it go? Because on this side, Zayla has air. But Jidoka's got T3, and on this side, Zayla hasn't got T3, but Jidoka hasn't got air, so... And that is a lot of gunships. Sure, I saw a bit of flak in there, but that should be enough gunships just to smack the flak. And then, gee, Jidoka is pulling back. He doesn't want to just lose all this in Zayla's territory. He's got more loyalists coming up and more flak. But will it be enough? Meanwhile, he's got more to worry about on this side as... Zayla's tanks come smashing into his expansion and while he is dropping NGs here to take this expansion on this side he's got to worry about losing this one and Zayla is really r racking up that mass lead as he knocks Jadoka off this expansion and there are loyalists trickling in but I think there's enough there to swarm one loyalist if they go on down However, forward comes Jidoka's other force on the other side. And this time, the gunships aren't over here. That, what, where's this drop going? Is that just going for reclaim? I think it might be, yeah as Zayla pushes across towards Jadoka's main base. But now, I'm surprised that the gun... Ah, that's because the gunships have come over here, and it looks like we're going to get a combined arms attack from both air and land. That's a lot of gunships, though. Those ones look like they're out of fuel. Yeah, look, he, Zayla really needs to get an air staging facility so he can recharge those gunships. Otherwise, those ten or so are going to be useless, and he's going to have to rely on these. However, Jidoka isn't pushing here. That should be enough to evict Zayla from here because of the T3, but this is looking brutal for Jidoka. There's so much air here from Zayla, plus a land army coming in, and he has got loyalists trickling out. In fact, he's now up to one, two, three T3 land factories. And he has got a brick in there as well, but will that be enough? This is horrific for Jidoka. What's he gonna do about it? I mean, he's trying to produce more T3 land, but... That said, he's put up a flak, and that's gonna neutralize the gunships. That flak might be the MVP of this game, because if he can stop the gunships for long enough that the T3 land production... Oop! But while I waffle on about that, Jidoka has pushed in over here. I said he had enough to take it, and it looks like he does. Look at these loyalists. They're just going to go to town on this expansion. And Zayla is relying on his tried and tested defense of gunships, and he's bringing them in. And I'm not actually see. There's a bit of flat trapped at the back here, but there's just so much hit points for the gunships to plow through in the form of these loyalists that there might just not be enough. And on this side, somehow, in his main base, Jidoka has held. This T3 production is really going as fast as it can, and it's pumped out enough to force Zayla back, and somehow the Ecos are even again. Oh, I say somehow, it's because, what am I talking about? It's because Jidoka just smashed this expansion.
Now these gunships, they really need to focus that flak. So I think there's only one more flak in there now. My dude, focus the flak and... Which they are, good. And now that force can be picked apart by the gunship before it does too much more damage. Still, it did quite a lot and I would not like to be in... I would not like to be in Zayda's position when it comes to losing that. In fact, this feels like it's a swing back in favour of Jidoka as these units are being forced away and thanks to the emergency production there's now quite a significant army coming up through the middle here from Jidoka. And on this side Jidoka begins to fall back. He's done the damage, he's smashed out that base. He's defended on this side. Overall, excellent play from Jidoka. Meanwhile, we see that Zayla has gone for T3 air, and that might make all the difference because Jidoka is still at T2 and hasn't even started T3. Over here, he was trying the classic Cybran stratagem of Medusa swarming, but before he'd been able to get the swarm fully set up, in comes Zayla with a bunch of pillars and smacks it down. So. Has Zayla started? Yes, Zayla has gone for T3 land as well, so he's not, no longer behind on that front, and he's getting Titans out. If I were him, I would be going almost straight for Percy's, because... Sure, I, I mean, I see why... Actually, no, I see why Titans. He wants to be able to send them running around the map, because Titans are super fast, and with their shields, they're excellent at kiting. But he will want a bunch of Percy's because he knows that Jadoka has a big bunch of loyalists and now some bricks, and he won't be able to stop that without Percy's. And look at this horde of flak here from Jadoka. Even with the broadswords that Zayla is now producing, I don't think he's going to be able to do quite as much from the air as he used to. Here, a lone loyalist is swarmed down by pillars. It's important to stay hydrated, and on top of that, it's quite early in the morning here when I happen to be recording this, so I'm chugging Dr. Pepper to wake me up. You'd have thought I'd have done that a little bit before casting, but no, you just have to put up with me being half asleep. Does it show? No. Probably. Anyway, I digress. What have we got going on? We have T1 bomber defense from Jidoka. But there's a bunch of flak in there and it's not going to do much. Jidoka has been able to recolonize this and he's bringing in loyalists. But I hear some gunshots over here as we have our first T3 land battle. But, but Jidoka has definitely the larger force here. And Zayla, all your inties are out of fuel. Please, please, please build a air staging facility. Especially if you're going to be relying on air as much as you are with that T3 air reduction. He's getting his first ion reactor down. And let's have a quick overview of the ecos. They appear to be very balanced. Zayla, but Zayla is st st stalling power which he's just finished his T3 P gen and that's brought him a little bit ahead. Jidoka's balance is an excellent example, though he maybe needs to spend a little more mass. Over here, Loyalists raid in, pull back. Over here, we're getting a very significant force build up, and on top of that, Zayla is badly positioned at this angle, and Jidoka is taking advantage of it, swiping in from the side. Zayla is forced to fall back a bit. And for the first time all game, we're beginning to get to the position where each player has the three hills you'd expect them to have. Broadswords massing in the middle here for Zayla. If I were him, I would... I know he's shown his T3 air and you can see where these boys are going. They're heading out round the outside. They think Jadoka's cover's in the water, and they're trying to spot him for a snipe. 
and indeed he is in the water and indeed they will spot him if Zayla is keeping an eye on it. So there it goes flying over there, they'll see him more if Zayla has his eye on the ball and looking at it I think he does because he's bringing this guy back to hold position here yeah yeah look at that he's put it on patrol he knows Jadoka is there he's got out a strat which I think he was originally planning to use for a snipe if he were on land but is that torpedo bombers I see yes he wants to try and snipe Jadoka in the water and Jadoka's brought in Inti's and he's got Thrak here so he, he knows he's and he's moving he knows he's been seen but suddenly we have two fights going on. In a beautiful example of multitasking, Jadoka is launching two attacks at once with two pretty significant armies. But over here, he's found that the broadswords are on their way, but what's that? I see a torpedo bomber. Uh, Zayla needed to send like 10 at once and then he could have got Jadoka, but I don't think one's gonna be enough or even two. Jidoka is being forced back by the broadswords, but his flak has taken a few of them down, but on this side he is getting in there. And Zayla's attempt to recolonize this hill is being thrown off, and suddenly he hasn't actually finished this hill yet, or even barely started it, and he's being thrown off that one, but down here we have Jidoka still in the water. He's bringing in Inti's, but the torpedo bombers are massing and Jadoka realizes he needs to get out. On this side, he's pushing back. Out of the water, into the water. He can't decide. And on this side, Jidoka is winning that fight again. We're now seeing bouncers coming out here and that will... Oh, but Jidoka has to be careful because if he's out of the water, the strat hits him. If he's in the water, the torps get him. Will he survive? On this side, his units continue pushing up and they're getting some significant damage done. Jidoka goes further into the water, but those torps are around. He's down to the yellow. He's going to have to watch out. And the strat's still patrolling above. There's now three bouncers and Jidoka might want to fall back towards them. But he's taken out the torp bombers. More are coming, but they'll have to fly over the bouncers. On this side, though, he is getting deep into Zayla's eco. And look at the eco difference. That's horrific for Zayla. But he's still got torp bombers coming in, and they're still hitting Jidoka. And watch this, over here, Jidoka has pushed in through the middle here, but he's run into an army of Zaylas and that attack is going to die, but this, this is the army that Zayla has to worry about. And suddenly all the air force from Zayla is dead and the bouncers have cleared it. There's a little force pushing in here, but there should be enough production to hold it off. So we're going to have to focus over here, where Zayla has to worry about this push. And the reason that Zayla has to worry about it is that it is walking right into his base. He's got a few T3 units in there, but that is a lot of loyalists, and I don't think he's got enough to stop it. And he's still producing torp bombers here. He needs to stop, or stop doing that, and he needs to start producing gunships to defend. Otherwise, he's just going to lose everything in his main base to Jadoka's push. Jidoka has a loyalist over here, Jidoka has a loyalist over here, and these top bombers can do nothing about it. He's building a snipe and sending it round, but Jidoka is out of the water, and so those top bombers are useless. That's a nice little force that's snuck down here, but I think Jidoka has enough to defend against it. So back up to Zayla's base. And he's gonna, is he gonna lose one of his TQP gens? He's had enough production to defend. And I don't think he's actually going to lose that P-Gen, so nice defense from Zayla, but look how much he's lost, and there are now bricks coming through here. 
They're trickling in a bit and Jidoka would be wise to note that there's enough T3 here to stop a brick or two. But Zayla has lost mexes in his main base. And this lone loyalist with its five vets got quite a brutal amount of damage done. Zayla hasn't had the chance to micro these and this force is more than enough to stop them. His torpedo bomb army is flying around here and he's got scouts looking for Jidoka but Jidoka is not in the water. Jidoka is up here and he's surrounding himself with Cerberus and Sams and shields and I think he's going to be safe. I wonder if Jidoka knows that Zayla is there in the lake. But Zayla has been able to fight off Jidoka's attacks. There's nothing of Jidoka's in almost the entire top half of the map. Apart from these two units which are about to die. But look at the eco. Poor Jidoka. He's over a hundred behind. J poor Jidoka? Poor Zayla. Zayla is over a hundred behind and Jidoka has a 3-2-1 lead in mass. And he's snuck some bricks round the outside through the water and he's bringing them up. And Zayla is pushing down here to try and get some counter damage done. If he doesn't see these bricks coming, he could lose main base mexes. These units are falling back. I think he's trying to gather here for a push. He's going to try and either kill Jadoka with these dudes or force him into the water and then snipe him with these torps. Meanwhile he's also building strats and sending them over here. So this looks like he's going all or nothing. This is going to be the snipe because if he can't get it then he's lost. Look at that eco difference. That is horrific for poor old Zayla. And the army is massing. That is quite a significant army, but Jadoka has more eco, and the more time Zayla spends massing this army, the more time Jadoka spends building a, a bigger army. And so these units are creeping around the back here, and they're getting in, and they're hitting Zayla's mexes. And Zayla doesn't have many mexes that he can afford to lose. Jidoka's got scouts here. He's now at T3A himself. He sees the strats. So he's putting up more shields. He's got cyber and shields of different techs being layered. That's good because it means that the shields will be out of sync with their restoring being at different techs. And it means that it's more likely when they overlap to provide him with a consistent bit of protection. He's got bouncers here. He's got that Sam. That, should, that plus the shield should be more than enough to stop the strat snipe. And Jadoka can see it. He's under no illusions about what's coming. The main army pushes in, but Jadoka's main army is waiting for it. And he's got... He's actually only put up one of those Cerberus. <coughs> but he's got point defences. He's got... Just to add a little bit of extra firepower, he's got a lot of loyalists. He's got a few bricks. And... Oh, Zayla! You're trickling in, don't do that. Bring it in in the formation, it's your only hope. But no, he's being flanked from the side. In come his strats, but Jidoka's getting got an ASF out and it's picking them off. And the bouncers take care of the rest. The strats are down. And Zayla's army is being smashed against the wall of Jidoka's army and his point defence. And Jidoka's calm is just standing there saying he does not care. And... Meanwhile, he's still got units up here making a mess of Zayla's eco. What can Zayla do about this? He is, he's being crushed. 47 eco to 175. Jidoka has a 4 to 1 lead. Zayla's lost his army. I don't think there's anything he can do. Everything is dead. Surely, surely Zayla is spent. He produces one more strap, but immediately the ASF from Jidoka comes along and shoots it down. And Jidoka's armies 
push forward once again and Zayla knows that the jig is up. Zayla resigns and Jidoka wins. What a game! For me it was notable just because there was action on all fronts at all times. Jidoka doing multi-pronged attacks, Zayla, put, um, Zayla doing the same, handling combats on different sides at each time, everything, everywhere, all at once. A film which I haven't actually seen yet. Anyway, what do you think of that? Near the beginning, Zayla actually had a bit of a lead, but Jidoka showed impressive control. He never threw his armies away and kept falling them back when necessary, never just left a big dump of reclaim for Zayla to pick up, and I think that was I think that was the difference. Despite a close shave with the torpedo bombers, he was able to whittle down Zayla's eco, and suddenly Zayla had nothing left. So what was the play of game there? What was the turning point? Tell me in the comments below. While you're down there, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and obey. I am the Commissar, and I will see you next time.